All right, all right, all right. My name is David Hare, and we'll get right into uh, our little town hall tonight. Okay, recap real quick. Uh, we decided to do this for our neighbors. We want to meet you and know you uh, in Marble Falls and Newton County. And of course, other people are going to be watching. Um, so I'm going to allow people in Marble Falls to ask a little more pointed questions. Um, I'm not going to get into some things with other folks, and I just wanted to be up front. I've said it. Now, moving forward, um, let's start right off the bat with a really cool question. Sonny on Facebook says, I just want to know if the existing history, I think he means historical and no, history and, oh, I'm sorry, history and structures will be saved. Most are at least 50 years old this year and are qualified for the National Historical Register. Great question, Sonny. Um, that really leads me into the first point that I wanted to hit tonight. I'll be joined tonight by um, Richard W. Snyder, our CFO and attorney, chief legal counsel. It sounds really formal. It's really not. He's a great guy. He does take care of um, the bottom line on things, and you'll meet him tonight. You're going to meet um, Rick Goodman, who we're pretty excited about. Rick and I go back a few years, and he is uh, a Grammy award-winning, multi-Grammy award-winning producer, has uh, produced projects with Dolly Parton and uh, George Jones, and the list goes on and on. I'll let him tell you more about that. And he is uh, also the son of the queen of gospel music, Vestal Goodman. And Vestal's dress and beautiful um, kind of a tribute to her is at Dollywood. So if you want to, if you know, I'm sure many of you do know who she is, but she's just an incredible lady. And Rick is um, Howard and Vestal Goodman's son. They they passed or went on to heaven, as we say. And um, Rick is just a, a, a gentleman and a talent. The thing I will tell you about Rick Goodman is you can spot a Rick Goodman production a mile away. The quality in music, his mixes are beyond belief. Um, and we'll talk to him about that. So he's just an incredible guy. You'll hear from him tonight. We're going to touch base with our buddy up there in Marble Falls, um, Bud Pelser, who has been very central in all this and helping us. Um, he made it very, he made it possible. And I will forever say that, that without Bud Pelser, not just whatever you guys may speculate about the business side of it. I will tell you on the logistics side of it, uh, pardon me, Bud was very instrumental in helping us find out who is what up there. And we, and me, I will personally forever be grateful to Bud for that. Okay, moving right on. The answer to your question, Sonny, um, just want to know if the existing historical structures will be saved. Most are at least 50 and are qualified for the National Historic Register. Okay, First thing you need to understand is, like I said, we sent a spy up there. I'm joking, of course. We just sent someone up to kind of do a, a peripheral uh, search of it. We did a lot of, obviously, Google Earth and all that from the studio in Vegas. Then we decided to go up there. We have spent two and a half, three days on the property, period. Okay? and uh, But we have spent literally about six, eight weeks just studying this, and we've got stuff all over the walls here of dog patch, and, and we've really gone into this in a big way. We are getting our feet on, we'll have a little better grasp of kind of what we're doing. What I can tell you about that is we didn't go through everything. I went through Skunk Works, um, of course, a lot of the stuff down in the village, and we are not going to remove, or I should say, we're not going to destroy anything historical at all. And we'll try to salvage as much as can, can possibly be saved of dog patch. We may move a structure or two or relocate them and create a, a dog patch area. Or um, the church building is going to have a beautiful setting. Um, that's already being worked on. So I think you're all going to be very, very pleased. Uh, obviously... I want you to understand where our company comes from, and then we need to get into that part real quick. Um, when I went to Europe for the very first time, I was struck at how seriously they take history. And why Dogpatch? Well, we already were going to Florida before we 
really understood what dog patch was. We'd seen some stuff about it some time ago, didn't take it to heart, weren't really interested in it, and were on our path. And kind of um, through a process of events, started looking at dog patch deeper. When I went to Europe, I saw how seriously they take history. And I have been troubled in America that we don't. Um, and I'm not even talking about the current political climate. I'm just talking about things that have happened for years. Of course, we can talk about statues and monuments here recently in the news. I'm not even addressing that. Of course, that's, that's an issue. I'm talking about just how we will have wonderful places. When I was growing up, um, there was a place that was just a farmer's market, but it was a real kind of old historic building. It felt that way. It may not have actually been, but it had a very country feel. And it just was a landmark in my community where I grew up as a child. And they tore it down and just put in, I mean, that, there's nothing even there because it's a big loop for the freeway now. Um, and I've just seen this all over the country. I've been literally from one end of this nation to the other, and it has always bothered me. Um, so I'm excited about this project because it's an opportunity for us to be able to save history and really stage it and, and make it economically feasible. We are a an economically driven, a capitalistic society, and too often, you've got these competing forces, people who just want to save something but have no way to pay for it. And then you've got people who want to do something and couldn't care less about history. And I really feel like um, that one of our strengths is that we're not coming in as property investors. You know, we're not trying to sit on a property and flip it and turn it into condos. We see what's there, and we feel like we're the guys to do what needs to be done with that property. Now, many of you may agree with some of our decisions, and many of you may not. That's just life. But what I can tell you in answer to Sonny's question is the heart of that is who we are. We are absolutely about preserving and celebrating history. And if that's who we are as a company, if that's our mission statement, which you can see all over our mission statement video on our website, we would never come into dog patch and say, get rid of it. Like I said, there are some buildings that when we do a final analysis, um, and I'm not talking about anything historic, no matter how bad a shape something truly historic is in, it will be saved. If there's a structure that's not all that historic and needs to move or go or be adjusted, then we'll, can, we'll deal with that when we deal with it. Um, so that's our heart. That's what we're about. Um, but it has to make money too, okay? And that I need to be clear on. So this is not a co-op. This is not a, a, a public park. It's a business, and it has to make money. But at the same time, the whole reason we're coming to Dog Patch is because of what's there. So rest assured, those of you Dog Patch lovers, we're not tearing it down. We just may adjust a few things, move a few things, and I think... By the time the park is fully opened in 2020, I, I think everybody's going to be happy. Um, the journey to then is a great resort that's going to be opening very quickly. And in stages, we'll, we'll be doing some things. All right, let me get Richard on the phone. And while they work on getting him on the phone um, to tell you a little bit about who we are, I will see if I can dig up another um, Facebook. What's the question? Why is that? Okay, we got a bad mic problem on. The, so I'm going to go old school and hold the microphone, I suppose. Um, okay, like I said, we're already boxed up our studio. So I'm sitting at a desk and just doing our thing. Let me see if I can pull up another question while they get Richard on the phone. Richard's our CFO and attorney. Um, I'm at that age where I need glasses and I just refuse to get them. Anybody know what that's like? <laughs> I've got to go get some glasses. And I was so proud because, you know, uh, people in my family, it's they've needed glasses really early. I'm like, I'll never need glasses. I need them now. <laughs> All right, let's see what we can find here. Um, the Let's see. Oh, I love this question. Hi, Stephen. How are you? Uh, nice to see you on Facebook. Will you be restoring or rebuilding the gristmill? Let me tell you something. 
That is one of my favorite. That thing's not working, not nothing. It is absolutely critically uh, staying put. And uh, we're going to restore it. And I've heard something. I don't know. Bud knows a lot of these details, but I don't know about the... Um, I don't know about the... There's something that was down by the by the waterfall, and I don't know. I'm fascinated by it. That may be infeasible, but there was apparently a mill there at one time, and I'd love to see that restored if, if that's even humanly possible or feasible, I should say. Anything's humanly possible these days. Um, but yes, the, the grist mill, yes. Now, the grist mill, um, we are not building a repeat of what is kind of the business model or the theming model of Silver Dollar City. Silver Dollar City is very much about, um, you know, the the showing guys doing the, the uh, what do you call it? <laughs> the uh, horseshoes, come on, help me out there. Um, anyway, the, the guys doing the different crafts and sort of thing. Now, we love our glass blower. So we'll have some of that, but that's not a heavy focus. Um, that was not, I'm totally distracted, gentlemen. You're going to have to take it out of this. We're normally in a studio, but I got people over here talking. Um, so, gentlemen, please, I'm having a meeting here. <laughs> All right. So we're not going to do, we're not trying to recreate or copy in any way what Silver Dollar City does so well. We really, folks, all of us in Newton County, we need to do our own thing, okay? And I think part of the problem with dog patches is, let's be real, Silver Dollar City does what they do very, very well, and I'm a re great respecter of what they do. What we will do is obviously, uh, like the glass blower, we're going to showcase some of those things, but we don't need to recreate a, a another version or any type of version of what they're doing at Silver Dollar City. So the grist mill will be open. Um, what and how it's used, I'm not sure. We'd like to have something really cool as a you know a part of it while just completely maintaining it as is. So that's the kind of stuff we're talking about. Okay, uh, I'll get to more questions. Let me get Richard on line one. Okay, folks, bear with me because um, I'm not working with a normal TV phone system here. Hello, Richard, are you there? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to have to do this old school and just point the microphone down here because everything else is boxed up. All right, everybody, this is um, Richard W. Snyder. He is our CFO and attorney. Um, Richard, why don't you just uh, say hi to everybody and, and um, we'll dive right in. Hello, how are you? It's nice to uh, to see. Uh, Do what? Oh, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry, Richard. Go ahead. Uh, I was just saying it's nice to uh, to get to know people. Uh, please uh, ask uh, ask questions. Yeah, absolutely. So, Richard, um, the main thing I thought that you could help tonight, we get a lot of emails and questions from people, and I'd like to settle this up front. Um, a lot of questions about who we are and what our structure is. The one thing I want to make um, clear up front is I'm a very outgoing personality, and I lead the creative team. Yes, I am an owner. I am not the owner. This is not my kingdom. It is not my empire. You know, I'm not Walt Disney Jr. <laughs> Love Walt, one of my heroes, um, but it's we're a company, and a company is made up of people who invest it is made up of people who have a say, and um, I'm blessed that the people around me value what I say, um, but at the same time, Richard's one of these guys who is one of many who will say, no, let's do thus and so. Um, so could you explain you know, that, that point as however you want to approach it? Because I don't want people thinking they're going to, some people that may work with us will see me kind of, you know, being whatever. So you approach it however you want to approach it. Okay. Well, you know, to, to begin with, what I'd, I'd say is um, it, this is a big job, and it takes more than, than one person can do. It takes more than two people can do. It takes a, a whole team of people. Some people have sh uh, strengths in certain um, aspects. Other people have strength in other aspects. Um, so what we've been doing is we've been putting together a team uh, to, to manage 
the entire business. And uh, David um, listens to everybody. Uh, everybody has a different perspective. Uh, and, and everybody's everybody's opinion counts. Uh, so when we uh, when we have meetings, uh, everybody brings their their perspective to the table. Uh, we we talk about every aspect that we can think of, and uh, and and we come to a consensus. Uh, David's uh, got the, the the creativity uh, of a, of a you know, a genius. Uh, we, he's able to do things that I, I can't even imagine um, uh, how he gets those done and, and so fast. Um, but uh, um, my strengths lay in other places, uh, business management, uh, things, of that, things of that nature, uh, accounting, uh, dealing with the regulatory authorities, things of that nature. Uh, and, uh, and we come together as a, as a team um, I think we uh, we do a good job. Yeah, I think um, one of the things that, you know, there obviously there were a lot of questions. When the, the news reports came out, We I did a video. If I thought anybody was going to see that video any significant, uh, I you know, I, I would have done my hair. <laughs> but I went down to Marble Falls, and we were doing that really to show a few people. Yeah, we put it out. We had no idea how many people were going to suddenly be interested, and our phone was ringing off the hook. So we were a little bit caught off guard, and I apologize to anybody in the press who we were unable to get back to. It was completely um, something we were not planning at that at that time. Um, Richard, as far as uh, we have people, a lot of a lot of applications have been coming in, and people want to want to get involved in different ways. Um, now I, I'm gonna again. I, I'm just say it. Why is that? Well, I have to take it off for the. This is the problem with not working in the studios because everything's you know kind of jimmy rigged here. But Richard, um, I want you to talk a little bit about uh, employees, if you will, because that's really your area. Basically, uh, Mike is the operations manager. You can see him on Facebook. He'll be interviewing you if you're involved in any sort of management way or any critical way. I'll probably be interviewing you or if you're involved in talent. Rick uh, Goodman may be um, auditioning or interviewing you. Um, so it just it really just all depends on what you're doing. But at the end of the day, most of you, um, if it's two people to begin with and 20 people the next a month or 40 people by the summer or 100 people by the I don't know but you'll be talking to Richard so Richard um, we've got a couple things that are not my cup of tea not my thing to deal with but there's some absolutes I guess and uh, why don't you just speak to employment um, issues for a minute if you might okay um, well I'd like to start off by saying that we're going to place a strong emphasis uh, on hiring local uh, we re really want to uh, uh, become an integral part of the uh, of the community, and we think that that starts with with hiring people um, that live in in Harrison, Jasper, and, and in the surrounding uh, uh, in the surrounding area. Uh, we're we're not uh, going to be reaching out, you know, three states away and bringing in um, uh, low cost workers um, just to to get them in there at the at the uh, uh, minimum wage. Uh, we want to bring in people local, um, and it, it, unless we need somebody who has special talents, uh, we 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 want to stick as much to um, the local population as, as possible. Um, now we have uh, uh, issues with regard to uh, the way we want to approach our our employees. Uh, one of those is that we're going to be um, drug testing. Uh, we, we're going to be making sure that everybody who works for us uh, is legally allowed to work in the United States. Uh, we're, we're not uh, uh, going to be you know, just trying to cut our costs as much as possible and, and go with, uh, with uh, uh, people who are going to uh, undercut the wage. Uh, but just the same, uh, we want we're going to have people that are in charge of other people's lives, um, especially with with ride operations, and and those people need to be safe. 
safe, safe, safe. Um, it, it, in every aspect of the business, um, dealing with with uh, people um, who don't have those kinds of problems, um, you know, somebody who doesn't have that kind of a problem doesn't need to uh, maybe steal money from the till in order to go and uh, and support and support a drug habit they don't have. Uh, so you know, drug testing is is very important. Uh, it, it it permeates the business and makes everything. Um, so much more honest, so much more fair, um, so much more reliable, and most of all, everything, so much more safe for our customers. Let me say something here. Um, we're in Las Vegas, okay, and we're, uh, I'm a native of Southern California, so nothing I'm saying now is directed at Jasper, Newton County, Harrison. Drugs are a very serious, serious matter in our country, and we have a zero tolerance policy. I mean, none of it. We're a family entertainment company, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna address this one time, and the rest of it's gonna be in the paperwork that people get. You'll know it. You have to take a drug test, and then we can all just be happy. Um, and that's not my area. That's Richard. Richard's gonna deal with it. But from my perspective, I will tell you, um, I understand that certain states are legalizing marijuana. It's a big subject matter here in. Uh, Las Vegas. We are a family entertainment company. And um, so nothing, no marijuana, nothing. Okay. And it's because of our brand. And I don't judge people. I'm not here to tell you how to live your life. I would recommend that you stay away from drugs and illegal activity because that's no life to live. But I'll just tell uh, those of you that have well, gosh, they seem really this or that. The reason is, is like there are things within the company that uh, within the brand that are not my cup of tea. There are things that are family oriented that I don't like, but I understand a lot of family people and in the country like those things, like a rock climbing wall. Do I look like the kind of guy that's going to get on a rock climbing wall? <laughs> you know, so this isn't about creating the kind of company that Richard wants, that I want. Uh, that anybody else involved with this want. It's a, it's about creating a brand that is uh, studied what the market's looking for, what people are interested in. And I'm not talking about just a handful of people in the local community. I'm talking about the broader tourism market and meeting that need with our own style and flavor. And that's what we're doing. So I don't say anything to disparage you or anybody that may be watching, but just to tell you, particularly his side's the legal side, zero tolerance on drug. My side is the brand side and we won't tolerate any of it. So if, you, if you're somebody that smokes a little weed or whatever, it ain't gonna happen with us. Um, and that's from a brand side. I don't even care if it's legal. I don't even know, that's Richard, he knows what's legal and I don't. But from a branding point of view, we don't want any of that, okay? Um, so that's, that's kind of where we're coming from. All right, let's move on to, um, just this is the only time we'll do this in any sort of pseudo public way this is really just a it, really this meeting should be happening at the at the property and it will in the next few weeks we'll have you all over for dinner but um richard why don't we get into a little bit about how the business of the company how you're handling that and then i can i can move on we need to move quickly because we got people waiting for questions but in terms of um the business offices and all that. Why don't you just discuss your area and, and how it's being handled? Well, um, I'm going to be uh, bringing up the financial uh, aspects of the business. Uh, the, the payable. You need to speak up, Richard, because it's kind of. Uh, okay, very good. Um, I'm going to be uh, handling the, the payables and receivables uh, for the. And are you doing? You're doing that from California, right? I'm going to be doing that from California for now. Yes. Okay, so what that means is checks are going to be coming from California. So there's not going to be anybody on site. And the one thing I'm going to tell you, because i got to move quick, this is uh, if you're a contractor or somebody that does work for us, you need to make sure you get something signed from somebody because I don't have the authority to just hand around stuff. It's not my money, okay? I get, I get a piece of it because I'm a part owner, but I'm not the whole owner. The process, why don't you go through that quickly and then I'm going to have to say goodbye to you because we got to keep rocking. Well, we're going to be, um, we're going to be, everything is in writing. Uh, we, we, don't, uh, we, we don't hire people 
uh, to come in and do a, a construction project to, to, to come in and, and provide you know, goods and services without knowing uh, everything in writing. Uh, I'm going to be getting bills uh, if I don't if it's if 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 I don't see where it's been authorized, uh, it's not getting paid. It's as simple as that. Uh, we need to see everything. You know, when you keep things in writing, everybody knows what everybody's getting. There's no mistakes. There's no no anything, which means that there's no lawsuits. Um, it just it gets to be crazy. Um, litigation costs get to be crazy. The way that you solve that problem is you make sure everybody's on the right page. Everybody understands what everybody's doing, uh, what everybody's charging, um, and, and you do that w with it being in writing. There, there's no other, there's no other uh, uh, way to do it. Okay, Counselor, your time is up. I have to say goodbye to you. Okay, great. All right, we'll talk with you later. That's Richard W. Snyder, a great guy. Um, he is more... Um, bottom line than I typically am. He's very cut and dry. But as far as a human being, he's just a quality person. And whatever your inner encounters may or may not be with him, I know you're going to um, appreciate Richard. And he's really there to look out for all of us. Okay. So that's Richard. All right. We have somebody on the line. Um, who am I speaking with? It's Christy. Okay, Christy, you have a question for us. I do. My question concerns. Well, wait a minute. Before you ask the question, tell me what your interest is in Dog Patch. Are you a prop? Or do you own property around there? Who are you in relationship to the property? I, I live about a mile from the property on dirt back dirt road from the from the, from the top there. Okay. And your question is? Um, my my question pertains to traffic. Okay. How you're going to handle that and any additional roads, trash, infrastructure, those kind of things. Beautiful. Okay, I'm going to hang up so that you can hear the answer on the stream, okay? Okay. All right. That's Chrissy's question is about infrastructure. The great thing about um, Dog Patch, and when I say Dog Patch, I understand that many of you have... Um, have uh, it's been referred to as dog patches, the park, and then Marble Falls up there is Marble Falls. We see it all as one resort, okay? It's not this and that. The hotel, all of it's a part of one, one resort. The great thing about it that we liked about it is that because of the, the uh, facilities that are there, it allows us to not just look at a bare piece of land and, you know, have to wait umpteen years to do something. We can start and get moving and and build an ad. So we're doing it, uh, pardon me, in phases. The question about traffic, I believe, is really going to be a subject when the park opens. And listen, we want it big. Uh, we want a big opening. We want a great summer in 2020 is, is what we're shooting for. Um, and of course, there's concerns. We're already looking at that. Our focus right now, on the short term is the resort up top, meaning the hotel, the RV park, um, some of the, the structures around that area. By the way, we've never met the postal people up there, but that's an adorable post office, and we can't wait to meet you. <laughs> I like, there's a post office in the middle of the resort. <laughs> so it's, it's just a fantastic property. Um, <clears throat> I'm very, uh, I don't like, for a company, uh, those of you that are neighbors thinking, man, what's the traffic going to be like? Listen, I grew up uh, in Anaheim when during the years before Michael Eisner went to Disney. And according to you know the business world, those were tough years for Disney. Of course, I didn't see it that way. I thought Disney was great. But their numbers were like what they are now. And these numbers now are ridiculous. And what I mean by telling you this story is that we're not looking to have guests pay a big sum of money or any sum of money because they're not going to pay a big sum with us, but any sum of money and be miserable. And I'm sorry, but too much of what I see going on in the theme park industry is just a numbers thing. You know, we want people to come and have a good time. We're thinking about even 
a limited reservation system um, that would help with security and help people be able to get in and, and get out and know that they have a spot and that we have control so we're not just running thousands and thousands of people through uh, through the park and creating the kind of unenjoyable experience. Basically, we want to maintain the spirit and, and uh, feel of what that beautiful, gorgeous Jasper Marble Falls area is. We want to maintain that. Of course, we all want numbers. We want numbers to fill up not just our property, but the bed and breakfast is up there. We're not here to take everything. We want to help you all. We want to work with the community. We want to be a part. We don't think we're Jesus and the answer to all your woes, okay? We're not here to be miracle workers. We're here to be vibrant, positive, enthusiastic neighbors who love that area or we wouldn't come, who love this property or we wouldn't be walking down this road. And we're simply asking you folks uh, to work with us. Now, when we get to the park, I said all that to answer Chrissy's question to say, yeah, we're going to have to address it. Right now, there's one way in and one way out. Realistically, from what we're looking at, uh, seven is really the primary or if not only way to it, but we could ease a lot of congestion if we could create a, a bypass of some sort um, down the road. That's not really going to come into play in the immediate two years. Um, and maybe we're being over optimistic, you know, I mean, it could be uh, everyone thinks Disneyland had one bad day the first day they opened, which was, you know, 1955. It was called Black Sunday. Well, the truth is they had what was called in this in uh, theme park circles. It was called the second opening, which I believe was 1959. That's because the park was having some problems, and they, they went in and tweaked some things, and by 1959, which is four years later, the place was rocking, okay? So we know we're not, we hope we just have a, you know, a bang-up grand opening, but it may take time, and there may be some things, and we will work with the community to make sure we're not becoming a problem. Um, we hope we bring a lot more people to the area but in the proper compression, at right seasons, right times, we'd like to boost um, the downtime. As you know, the area is um, uh, heavily dependent on spring and summer, and we think there's a window there, Christmas being a big opportunity, to boost tourism and some sort of something that uh, just picks up a little bit of the downtime, okay? So we're going to be sensitive to it. I agree with you, Chrissy. Um, when we get to the theme park, level of this development yeah we have some things to address and we will and we'll do it with integrity okay so i answered that what else we got happen is somebody from from an, a same question same question so a lot of people are concerned about it. i really don't think any of you in the area have any real concerns um up and up through 2020 okay i think it's going to be um hopefully a little bit better than business as usual. Now, we're doing some very aggressive marketing. We're going to be producing 30-minute TV specials. You would call them an infomercial. They're not going to look anything like an infomercial. They're going to look like an entertainment travel thing that's not just going to be about us, okay? We're going to talk about the Buffalo River. We're going to talk about some of the historical things to do in the area. We're going to find that great restaurant over in Jasper that everybody's been telling me about, and I'm going to go there before I start my diet, all right? <laughs> and we're going to talk about these wonderful places so that we get a lot of interest and we're going to run that in uh, Texas area to Oklahoma area, uh, Missouri, you know, and uh, just those kind, those parts of the country right there in the Midwest and the South and um, be running those at all different hours. We'll have like six, seven, eight different versions of those shows and the TV stations. Yeah, if you're flexible with them, they'll work with you and you get a good price is what I'm trying to tell you. But the awareness is what we're trying to lift, okay? The area does incredible, about 2 million people, but I think we can do way more than that. So yeah, we want to boost um, tourism. We want to be partners with you in Newton County in particular and surrounding areas, and we will. We're not... We're not here to sit on the hill and, and play big shots because we're really not. We're just guys excited about a project. You know, I mean, we could be on Shark Tank right now talking to Mr. Wonderful. That's how excited we are. <laughs> Instead, you know, we don't, we're not talking to Mr. Wonderful. We're, we're just going and doing it. So we are enthusiastic, my friends. 
and we will be sensitive. Um, as a fan of Disneyland and the man Walt Disney, I don't like the company so much today, but I love the man and what he accomplished. I don't want to create what I've seen that company become. I don't want to be a part of that. I just want a great, thriving resort that people love to come to, and there's enough people that makes it exciting, that feels like it's really happening, but not so many that you're, you need a vacation from your vacation. And that's really what people are saying about many of the major theme parks. When we were done with that vacation, we needed a vacation. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're getting calls. Um, let me see if I can take another um, Facebook. What you got? Turn ringer down. I can't because of the of the other. Let's take that call real quick, and then we need to get to Rick, and then Bud Pelser is going to join us on the phone. Um, let me see if I can find a Facebook question. I hope I'm answering your questions. We'll do this face-to-face -face in a few weeks, okay, if you want to come over. By the way, let me say that. Those of you in Marble Falls, um, we are going to have not a potluck. We'll do the food, but, I mean, just a real casual, nothing commercial, nothing for the public. Uh, just a meet and greet, and and let's just have some music playing and some good food and good times. And if you if you want to be a part of that, drop us an email. If you haven't signed up to the website, very easy to do. Just go to heritageusa.com, and a little thing pops up there, I think. Um, let me look here real quick. I got another question. Um, Okay, uh, Christina, I love the question. She says, um, I'm a local artist and sculptor living in Marble Falls. How do you feel about local artists? I love local artists. I love artists, period. Um, I, so you understand where I come from, I set out to, uh, to play piano and sing. That was what I did when I was very young. And I, I loved entertaining. Then I learned to how to tell a joke or two and I thought I'd be a comedian and then I I won a dance contest and I thought I'd be a dancer I mean I went through every end of it until one day I wrote directed and produced the musical and stood at the back of the auditorium and watched everybody else do what they do and yet I had a hand in it and it was like creating a painting and it was the most fulfilling thing and I determined from that day that my life would not about would not be about making David Hare a celebrity, a star, um, seeking fame, but producing. Now I I love talking, obviously, and and communicating with people. But my joy, believe it or not, a lot of people think I want to be on camera and be a, a you know out in front. I really don't. I do because I just speak from my heart and say what we're doing. But I love watching other people do what they do. I'm a fan more than anything. And I think it was Steve Jobs who said something along the line about what really makes the innovators are people who see other things and what other people do and have the ability to put them together. And I think that was a gracious way of him saying, they're not all my ideas. They're not all what, it's not all about what I do. It is about letting people do what they do or ideas blossom and then just having the ability to put them all together in some cohesive fashion. So I say that to say I love artists. I'm a fan of artists. I want to find ways to celebrate you. Um, and it's just what works, what fits, and what fits with the brand. So that's pretty much it. Um, but we'll celebrate you in every way. What do we have happening? Joe, horseback and ATV. Is he on the phone? Okay. Joe and ATV's horseback. How are you? I'm David Hare. Oh, hold on a minute. Hold on. Go ahead, Joe. Okay. I'm here. You so you had a question? Yeah, I just I saw on your uh, Facebook that you're going to have horseback riding and rent ATVs and activities like that. Are those going to be confined to the property, or any of those activities going to going to be outside the property, or any other activities? Okay, Joe. Thanks. Do you mind if I hang up? And you can hear the 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 answer online. Okay. Uh, all right. So Joe wants to know about the ATVs. Um, we are creating a family vacation, um, a little one-stop vacation destination that's kind of meeting a need. What we're not trying to do, nor do we want to do, is compete with 
the businesses that are happening in the area that are servicing like the Buffalo River. When a, vac when a family or vacationers or people come to the resort, we're going to offer a little ATV place for people that have never that aren't big ATV people. So it's going to have a great uh, course that takes you through some trees and beautiful setting. Um, but it is nothing that is in any way competition with a guy who may be renting ATVs and people want to take them out for a day. I've done both. I've rented a jet ski and gone out on uh, out in uh, Laughlin, Nevada and you know just taken it for the day and had a time and I've done little tooling around stuff. Um, we're basically trying to create a, a resort that a family can come for a weekend or a week or two and do a few things and then if they want to get out and explore but when you get to the point that you want to go do your ATV all day long and that, then you're an enthusiast on some level or an interested enthusiast or a wannabe enthusiast. We're going to leave that to the professionals. <laughs> and I mean the, the extreme sports people. The people that we have are actually um, some of the best in the country. And we've talked to them and love them and know them very well. And they're just fantastic. They do all ends of it. They could come into the area and be a major competitor if they wanted to be. We've asked them to work within this parameter um, because we really believe it's going to be the best thing for our target market. Okay, a family that would come, they swim out, they were swimming at the pool, and they want to do something. They're like, let's go ride ATVs, and for about 20 minutes to an hour, they get on it and tool around a pre-prescribed path that's still a lot of fun, still sightseeing, not a go-kart track, but a real path through the Ozarks. I think uh, they're going to have fun. The horses are exciting because the horses will, for a limited time, um, allow you to go on the original trail that was through Dogpatch, as they were way back in the day. So uh, until the park opens as a park, theme park, and is you know, the redesign's done, that will continue. We will do that through the park proper. And then the horses will move uh, to another location that will oversee that area and be gorgeous, but just not within the dog patch park. So that's basically what's going to happen there. Um, again, we're going to encourage people. You want to go for a, a, a day-long horseback ride or do a, you know, this is just basically rides and um, on the ATV thing, same thing. But if somebody wants to come out there, really get into it, you know, written canoes and doing all that, we're going to encourage them to go to the people in the community who've been doing it and doing it well, okay? We're team players. Um, that's what we want to be. We're here to help. We're not here to, um, you know, to, to come in and upset anything. I hope we help. I really do. Let me just say something about competition real quick. Um, I'm not putting us in this league. Please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Um, but, you know, there's egos in competition, and then there's the net result of competition. And a lot of times, egos get in the way of the net result. Um, I know that some of the big guys that were running the corporations like Disney and Universal, there were some ego things that you all can read about. They're not anything secret that were going on when Universal decided to take on Disney, quote, unquote, and build their big resort in uh, Orlando. Well, the net gain of all that, on the ego side of it, it's what are they doing and why are they doing that? Um, and the net result is everybody's doing pretty darn good. Universal's doing great. Disney's having record years. So Universal hurt them not. They didn't hurt them in any way. And Universal obviously is benefiting well. Now, if you're just a miser who always sees the piece of the pie that you're not getting, well, then you may not like competition. We're not that way. Um, we really believe the net result is that we all do better and that we all benefit greatly. And sure, um, you know, there may be a customer or a thing that we pick up that someone else doesn't and vice versa, okay? Somebody may come out there, see our place and decide, you know what, I like that little bed and breakfast down the street. I, I, let's just stay there. I've been coming to Vegas for years before we ever brought the company out here. I grew up in California, so we would drive here sometimes twice a month. 
And um, many, many times you'd come to Vegas with your mindset on where you were staying and you'd settle in on a place that you never even stayed before and said, wow, I really had a great time. So that's the reality, what I call the net result of competition, that sometimes our attitudes can thwart. And uh, I just want to do everything I can to say the net gain for everybody we hope is better. Uh, and that's certainly our attitude and our effort. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Um, okay, um, thank you for answering my question. Uh, da, da, da. Also, hold on here. Doing the old refresh thing. Um, let me talk to you about expectations. One of the big things that came up. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna take I'll go to that and that's gonna be kind of where we're gonna close. Where are we at? Okay. We're we'll in about ten minutes. Oh, we've got a couple people to talk to. Wow. We're gonna wrap this up quickly. Let me move through two points. Um, I need to talk to Rick real quick if we could get him on the phone. Um, <clears throat> let me move quickly. I'm gonna i I'm gonna address this for the last time publicly, okay? And that is uh, Heritage USA, the name, and Jim Baker, the television preacher, okay? First of all, we are not associated with Jim Baker. Richard, uh, who you heard earlier, has never, ever met the man, doesn't know that much about him. Mike, who's the operations manager who's coming, and you'll meet Mike, never met the man, knows very little about him. I have met Jim Baker, and I, I have been in a lot of places, and so let me tell you how this all came to be, because I understand on some level, I would never even address it except for the fact that we are coming to an area where he happens to be based out of, or near where he's based out of, so it does beg the question. Listen, folks, those of you that are suspicious and conspiratorial, conspiracy you know, theorists, I get it. I would be going, yeah, right. So let me, you know, let me explain how this happened. Our company name was, uh, I'm not going to say the old name because I don't want to promote the old name. We had an entertainment company that had a name that involved America and entertainment, okay? And we didn't like it because it didn't translate as a kind of, it was a good corporate name, but it didn't translate. And we literally, before we ever knew about Dog Patch, we literally went around and around and around. And when the when some of the things started happening in the news about statues being torn down and monuments, and we 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 looked past a lot of things, but felt like you know it's it's what we're about. It needs to say what we're about, which is celebrating America's history. We've always said that about our company. The name Heritage USA came up. I was against it. Now remember, this is before we ever said we were coming to uh, Marble Falls. This goes all the way to when our thought was that we were headed to not our thought we were headed to Florida. So we had no idea of Dog Patch when this happened. And really, Mike is the person on our in our company who was a big guy petitioning. He thought the Heritage USA name was just fantastic. And I knew the history very well of Jim and Tammy Baker and, and, and all that. So we did a little research, and we found out that in a lot of people's minds, Jim and Tammy Baker are very well-known, famous names, okay? There's a lot of people that don't know what they're doing today. Their audience is, uh, Jim's audience is not the same as it was back in those days, but he has a big following, okay? And he's got a new wife and they're doing their thing. The next point on that is that um, we, uh, Heritage USA is something that was 30 years ago. So it was Jim and Tammy Baker was out there big, PTL, which was their network, out there big, and then Heritage USA. Obviously, it was talked about a lot, but in the three, it was the lower three. And there's a Heritage USA Federal Credit Union. Now, anybody who says we're associated with Jim Baker, then I want you to call up that bank and say, is this bank owned by Jim Baker? <laughs> There's a great antique store I want to go to. It. It's in Ohio called Heritage USA Antiques up there in Ohio. And um, so it's a, it's a great name. It just is a very good name. So I will address this for the last time. 
we're not a religious organization, but we love America. And I believe when I was growing up, Disneyland used to have sacred choirs come and sing on Main Street at Christmas time, singing, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Not all the time. And it was, Disneyland's not a Christian theme park. But a lot of companies are shying away from things that are traditional or have meaning. And all we're doing is that thing, America. And if a, a gospel choir comes on a Saturday afternoon and sings out in the park, great. But that's not what you're going to hear all the time. And most of the time, you're going to hear a country singer. You're going to hear a rock singer. You're going to hear a jazz band, whatever it may be. But I'm not excluding gospel because a few people say, are you related to Jim Baker or associated with Jim Baker? The answer is no. <laughs> the other thing is, um, I'm not like some people. There are people that just vehemently don't like people. And I apologize to you that I can't jump on your bandwagon and attack uh, Pastor Jim Baker and his group. I won't attack him. I think he's a man that at one time, his park was third to Disneyland. So my only knowledge of Jim is in studying what he did right. Everyone knows what he did wrong, and he wrote a book called I Was Wrong. So even he knows what he did wrong. What I did is study what he did right. And what he did right was build a park that was the third most visited park behind Disney World, Disneyland, and, um, and then it was Heritage USA. So... But I parted company with him in terms of, uh, I never was in company, so to speak, but I parted philosophy with him because he's on a different track and a different trajectory, and he doesn't see the world the way I see the world, and that's life. Welcome to America. I think the tension we see in America is because everybody that doesn't agree exactly the same can't get along. Well, I'm not going to attack Jim, but I don't agree with him. And um, I'm not going to attack other people that I don't agree with. So I'm, if that makes people mad that I don't pick on people, um, and then they want to spin that into saying I support people, that's your problem. Okay, it, We're not associated with Jim Baker. Nobody else in this company has ever even met the man but me. And um, we're not, it's, it's not a religious organization. We're not selling in-time food buckets with people you know, 20 years shelf life food. And that's what he's doing over there in blue, uh, blue eye, Missouri. And I wish him and his family, nothing but good things, but we would never be a part of that. It's just a different thing than what we're doing. Okay. That is the last time I'm going to answer that question. And some of you have been pretty tenacious and determined about it. When you see the park, there's no way that survival food fits with heritage USA. It just ain't going to happen. <laughs> All right, but I love them as people. And listen, do you have family members who don't like the same kind of music you do? You know, and do you have to go throwing stones at them? You know, I just don't agree with them. That doesn't mean I don't care uh, for people. And I'm not going to attack the people just because you want me to demonstrate some separation from them. I wish them nothing but the best as I do everybody but I would never associate in any way with the branding. You hear me talk about branding? Same thing. Okay? So that's that. What do we got? Rick Goodman, how are you? Okay, this is Rick Goodman. And Rick, um, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, awesome. <clears throat> Rick Goodman is... Um, uh, not only one of the most incredible people that you're ever going to meet, he is one of the most gifted people you're ever going to meet. Um, I met Rick at a place called Melody Land, which was across the street from Disneyland. Uh, it was originally it very much like the hub. That's why we're calling it Melody Land. It was a theater, and it was a 3,500-seat theater in the round, and the hub is exactly about half the size of Melody Land. Now, Melody Land was, um, when I went there, was taken over by a church, and we're not building a church, but we are having the theater up at Marble Falls, and we're going to do some pretty cool stuff there. Very cool stuff there. All entertainment, lots of fun, dancing, great things going on there. Um, but when I was young, uh, this very famous couple named Howard and Vestal Goodman came to Melody Land in a Christmas musical. To be, They were the stars of it. And I just, I was the type, I just wanted to be anywhere I could be that was something happening. So I was, I was put to assist 
uh, Diane Goodman, Rick's wife, and of course I met the famous Rick Goodman, who was managing uh, his family's uh, at that time, his mom and his dad. And um, that was it. That's I was a little, you know, pain in the rear end guy that tried to stick my nose in everything. And Rick has just been gracious all these years. We've we've crossed many, many, many times. And so Rick Goodman, it's an honor to be with you, my old friend. Man, it's great. It's great to be with you. And I, I tell you, I'm I'm excited about Heritage USA of the Ozarks over there, buddy. It's all right. It it looks great, and it's it's only going to be bigger and better. Okay, let's just tell everybody a little bit about you. Um, so Rick Goodman is our president of entertainment. He will handle all the entertainment. And um, uh, when people are already asking about performing there, et cetera, et cetera, that's going to go through his office. Rick, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about your background um, and and let's just give them an overview of, of, of you and your career. Well, you know, I've had a great career. I always tell people my journey in life has just been amazing for me. As you know, as a young guy, I mean, my parents uh, toured with Minnie Pearl, Roy Cuff, and Hank Williams Sr. in an old Chrysler limousine, and and I was I was a baby. I traveled on that with them everywhere, and pictures of me on the stage playing a little ukulele and. All that, so I've, I got to do all that, and then uh, at some point in time, I thought, well, I'm going to play drums as a young teenager. So I started playing drums, and I started playing drums with uh, with my family, and I played on different uh, with other artists. I played uh, on jingles for for uh, for uh, for different you know for different artists like the Oak Ridge Boys. I, I played drums on a jingle with them one time. And so I did that, and at some point, I had a I had a jingle company. I don't even know if you know this. I had a jingle company, and we did a national radio jingle. My company did for uh, Whirlpool, and for for different folks, and it, it it was great. And I I got to do all of that during my life and traveling and everything. And my parents, uh, I I worked on projects. Uh, they won the first Grammy, and I was there with the group in 1968 that was given for gospel music. And uh, and then again in 1978, they won. And I'm just sitting here looking on the wall. Oh, Lord, the nomination goes for 1969. Uh, they were nominated again, uh, 1975 uh, nomination, 1978. Uh, they were nominated in... Uh, 1990. So all those records I I played on and produced. How did you How did you go from, you know, because I know a lot of traveling families. How did you cross over to producing? Because your ear, your albums, whether it's something secular like a jingle or whether it's you know, tell me. Let's jump ship on this question. How did you ever get involved producing for Wayne Newton? Well, I wrote a song called We the People, and I played it for a dear friend of mine who uh, just last year passed away. Uh, I miss him deeply. His name was Rhubarb Jones. He was a huge radio DJ of the South in Atlanta uh, for 106 and 104 FM, and he was the morning drive guy. And he was a dear friend, loved my mom and dad. He said, "I'd rather meet, I'd rather be with Vestal than than Dolly or anybody else I know." And so I, I knew him. I didn't, you didn't have email, but we had fax machines. And I told him about this song, and he said, "Fax me a copy of that." So I faxed him the lyrics. No, there was no demo. Faxed him the lyrics, and about a week later, uh, he called me and he said, "Well." I just sat with Wayne Newton. He was in town here, and uh, and he said, I want you to come down here. And I said, okay. So I went to the Falcons game, and he was calling the stadium Falcons games at that time. And Wayne was there. I met, you know, and I was like, okay, I want to meet Wayne. Yeah. And Wayne had to leave. Something came up, and he left. But Rhubarb, he faxed him a copy of the lyrics, no demo, of that song to Vegas, and about, I guess, a week, two weeks later, I get this phone call from 
from Wayne's uh, personal assistant and uh, and everything, and he he called me and he said, "Hey, Wayne wants to meet you." I said, "What?" Oh yeah, Wayne wants to meet you. I said, "Well, okay." And he said, uh, "Here's the deal. We want you to fly out here, and he wants you to just see his show, and he wants to shake your hand." I said, "Okay." So I I flew to Vegas, and I'm walking down through the back doors and kitchens uh, to get to the dressing room at the Hilton in Vegas, and uh, I thought, boy, if somebody is yanking my chain, I'm really being yanked here. I said, they've gone with the air flight, and now they've given me, they've got my room, they got me a suite here at the at the Hilton, and now I'm walking down through here. I hope I knock on this door that they tell me, and somebody's behind it. And I knocked on the door, and uh, it was Wayne's guy. His name was Bear. And uh, a great guy. He's since passed away. He said, come on in, Rick. He said, Rick? And I said, yeah, come on in. So I went in, uh, went into this room. There was Wayne standing there. Get, he had gotten dressed, but he had this little thin jacket on before he put his tux jacket on. And he said, hey, I just wanted to say hi to you. And I said, well, you know, I brought you a CD of my parents. I'm from West Virginia. I know exactly who your parents are. I I've listened to their music, and I love your mom, and I love your dad. Vestal and the Happy Goodmans, I love them. <laughs> and so we stood there a minute and talked for 20 minutes or so and just kind of, you know, shared shared uh, how much I liked him, and he shared how much he loved my, my music and my parents' music. And so he loved the song, and he wanted to shake my hand. That's Wayne. And so I, uh, I watched his show. I went back to my hotel room. I went over to the convention center the next day and met a friend of mine uh, who was there for a big uh, NAB, uh, National Association of Broadcasters Convention in Vegas, they have. So I met him. We walked around. I flew home. Two weeks later, my phone rang. I was in my car, and we didn't have email, but we did have cell phones, and my cell phone was not handheld. It was in the car. And it rang, and it was bare, and he said, hey, the chief said he wants to come to town and record. And I was, what? Oh, okay. He said he wants you to book musicians. He figured you'd know those. I said, I know great musicians, the best ones here in town. There, There's so many. They're, they're all here in Nashville. He said he wants you to book the, uh, find a studio, book the musicians, and uh, he wants to come to town in two weeks and record. Two to three weeks. I said, okay. I said, who's going to produce? He said, Wayne says you are. Wow. So I never ask. I, you know, uh, I, I never ask for that. And all of a sudden, I'm producing Wayne Newton's record. And <laughs> it's it's amazing. And there's, you know, you can go on the Internet and, and you can Google and you're going to get half truth, half, I mean, you can get anything on the Internet. And, and a lot of it's true, a lot of it's not. But the song, Wayne had a Wayne had a letter that Elvis had written, and he wrote it in the hotel six months before he passed away. And he hand wrote it out, and it said, I, it's quiet now. I probably won't sleep tonight. I don't need all of this. Help me, Lord. And he signed it. But he w- wadded it up, threw it in the trash can. Well, Wayne found out about it. Wayne found out about it, and he uh, he went and, and had Bear buy the letter, and it's his prized possession. So while we're recording, he wanted to record a song about that letter, and it, and I said, well, okay, and uh, I, I, I didn't know, and two weeks before we were doing the final, a week before we did the final tracking session, uh, he called and he said, have you got this song ready? I said, the chief wants to know. And I said, no, I haven't even seen the letter. I, I, I need to know. And so he, he rented a plane and flew me to Atlantic City to see Wayne for about 15 minutes in a room the next morning. And uh, we sat down there and he showed me a copy of the letter that he had faxed there. And he showed me a copy of the letter and it said, help me, Lord. And I said, okay, this is a ballad. I know exactly how this needs to be. And so I sat there with a piano player, and um, it's called uh, it's called The Letter instead of Help Me, Lord. Because when we were tracking, I told Wayne, I said, man, you have got to read this letter. 
in this. And so we did it did a section where it broke down. I sent somebody to my house to get my acoustic guitar because everybody else had gone from the studio. And I said, I need a little melody behind it. Wayne, I want you to read the letter. So he went out and read the letter. And you can go on YouTube and see Wayne Newton, the letter. And we shot a video uh, in the Hilton there with his orchestra and everybody. And he, of course, he with video. And so you wrote that song. I wrote it. He lipped. The, he lipped it in that, and it's an it's an incredible video. And somebody put on there that it's a story, and this is how it was written. Well, I'm just telling you the whole story about how it was written. So the letter was written by Elvis Presley. Yep. Wayne knew. My, my song was called "Help Me, Lord," and when you hear it, you you would understand that the last chorus I saved, I saved, uh, and. When it hits that last chorus, you as a musician and people hearing it, they'll hear a big choir hitting that big chorus. Help me, Lord. And I, it, it's just powerful. Wow. That is. So this, this is the joy of, um, the, the joy of dog patch and what's happening in, in Arkansas is not just material things, it's people. It's people like this who, when I was a kid, showed me kindness. These were very famous, are very famous people. His mom and his dad are just legendary. And you would have thought I was, if not a brother, a cousin, and welcomed into their their family. And let me tell you a quick funny story. I was traveling across country, um, doing different dates at different places, and as it turned out, we pulled into a, a Holiday Inn in Muskogee, Oklahoma. And I get out of the car, and it's a nice Holiday Inn, and go into the hotel room, and the phone rings. And the guy on the phone says, David Hare? So yeah, he goes, this is uh, so-and-so with law enforcement. I mean, he was scaring me like you would not. And I was, I was young. I was 19 or so, maybe 18. I don't know. And I was scared. Like I was like, what's going on? What what happened? He goes, David here. This is Rick Goodman. <laughs> I said, Rick Goodman. How did you find me? He said, I saw you pull up. He said, Mom and Dad and I and Diane we're we're at the same hotel. We're doing a concert in uh, Muskogee. Are you doing something? I said, He goes, Come on down and say hi. And you know, we haven't been close, close buddy buddies over the years. I mean, he's in Nashville. I've been in California, but Rick is just that kind of people. And we've just been, um, we connect and it's like we've, you know, been connected uh, all these years and just back and forth through the years. So I love uh, Diane and, and Rick for the graciousness. And I really want to end on that point. For us, Dog Patch is not just property and, uh, you know, even dreams. It really is hearts and people. And I hope that's the kind of spirit that we project. Um, I hope that we project and and create the kind of environment that people really love being around. Um, not contentious, not fighting, but warm-hearted, gracious, and let's show that hospitality to the world, and then we may have to not just cut in a row, we may have to cut in a freeway to deal with all the people. <laughs> Absolutely, David. Absolutely. You know, there's, there's no better people than the people that will come to a park like Heritage USA there and, and that have been the dog patch, they, those are real people. That's the salt of the earth, as a lot of people say. That is the people that built this country and that built this, and that built this heritage that we all have. And my mom and dad, I know, are smiling right now, uh, smiling, looking over the balconies of heaven and going like, yeah, you go, David. I'll go. You go. And it's going to be it's an amazing it's an amazing piece of property. It's going to be really great. I look forward to bringing to bring in country and bluegrass and folk and a little gospel, you know, and and it throwed in there and everybody getting to enjoy it. Just quickly, Rick, because we're running out of time, run through some of the names you've worked with real quick um in in the different, you know, in the in the music. Well, uh, you know, I produce tracks and music with... I said real quick. <laughs> okay. 
and it, it'll sound like I'm name dropping. Is what I started to say, and I don't, I don't like that. But uh, Vince Gill, Dolly Parton, uh, Larry Gatlin, uh, Lord of Mercy, Sandy Patty, uh, George Jones, uh, Winona, uh, Andre Crouch. Uh, let's keep taking it. the Newsboys. Uh, I mean, I, I, I just, it just goes, the list goes on and on, and in gospel, uh, it's, it's everybody in gospel. I've, I've worked and played on everybody's record that's, that's out there in gospel. Didn't you produce Gene Simmons' solo album? No, I did not work with Gene Simmons. Although, although I've met Gene Simmons at the, uh, at the Hope Music City uh, Sheridan here in Nashville one time. <laughs> I love this man. You're going to love him. Uh, he is a fantastic person and a talent like you would not believe. Um, I'm pretty set in my ways. Uh, I, I know exactly what I'm looking for. There's only one person I can think of right now, and I bet you there's probably 10. But the one who always comes to my mind that I yield to and say, tell me, is Rick. Um, he is just a quality and a caliber in all that he does that is everything um, we aspire to be as a company. So, Rick, my best to you and Diane. We'll talk soon, okay? Man, best to you and uh, looking forward to it. And Diane said, tell everybody hello. Awesome. All right, that is Rick Goodman, my friends. And I think um, we have time for, let me just see if I can grab one. we got to wrap up. We have gone long, long, long. Um, actually not. It's about an hour and 15 minutes, so we'll wrap it up here in the next few let me just see if I can grab a question. Uh, let's see here. Um, oh, wonderful. A beautiful comment to Rick Goodman. Okay. Okay, if we have time for one more phone call, if you want to make a call, you're welcome to do it right now. I would do it quickly. Let's talk to Bud Pelser and we'll wrap up tonight, okay? Um, all right, so basically, uh, you know, I went through that side. Let me talk to you about the plans for everything. Now, I explained to you that we've we've only been there three days, and we're, we're coming out and going to spend some time. We put out a video that says the preliminary plans. We feel good about that schedule, but please understand there's no human – it's not humanly possible for us to be able to, in three days – ascertain everything that needs to be done, how it needs to be done, what needs to happen. Um, so uh, we'll get firmer plans probably in the next you know, couple months. But we're, we're doing two things. We're starting and we're planning. So we're starting today and planning the future all at the same time. So, um, uh, and the other thing I will tell you is it's a very, very complex project. We don't know all that's in front of us. I mean, people, people have acted like we're, um, you know, like it's, it, it's like, I don't know. All I can tell you, I, don't, I was going to give an analogy. I'll avoid the analogy just to say that people have, some people, a few people, have put a lot of weight on, oh, I hope you this and don't disappoint that. Look, I, I'm not God. I don't have an all-seeing eye. Um, we're telling you what we know as we know it. And to the best of my knowledge and to the best of everything we've researched and planned and put a lot of time and a lot of money into, we are comfortable. There's a lot we still don't know. Um, and yeah, anything could happen. There could be a, you know, a giant prehistoric lizard living under Marble Falls that we have to, you know, eradicate. <laughs> I mean, I I don't know what I don't know all that's there. I don't know all that we're going to confront. And to the best of our ability, we're telling you that. But uh, please don't put so much weight on. Well, are you going to? Because we don't know. Uh, we we preliminarily looked at it and said this should be doable. Uh, but there's still much to figure out, and we're on that journey. But we're excited about it. Well, uh, we go back to the future now to somebody who has helped uh, make all of this. Let me see if I can get him on the phone. Make all of this um, possible. And I really want to talk about the logistical side of it. Um, many of you know Bud. Bud is an incredible visionary. Um, I am still blown away by the spill-proof uh, um, 
pet bowl, water bowl, because I've I've done the camper thing and and the bus thing a little bit and uh, know what that's like. So that's one thing. But then when you you think about dog patch, many of you up there know how pivotal Bud has been. So let me say from our company's standpoint. Um, I just told you, we don't have all the answers today. It's impossible. We, folks, our first time to look at the property, other than the person we sent out there to kind of tool around the outskirts of it uh, before we went there, was um, Thanksgiving. We spent our Thanksgiving up there. So there's a lot we don't know. But what we do know is we would not be standing here today even discussing anything if Bud had not... Uh, not only looked after his interests, but gone beyond that to help us facilitate all that is transpiring here. And um, I just want to say uh, publicly, Bud, that we appreciate all the work you've done and how you selflessly, when you got, when you and your partner and your company have a very serious investment up there, you've also been gracious in helping us, helping coordinate uh, the other properties that were so central to it. So can I start with a thank you? <laughs> You're very welcome, and it's very humbling, David. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, guys, really. Well, um, are you ready for your new neighbors? I'm, I'm ready. I'm, I'm well I'm open. I'm gonna, I'll fix food. I'm ready. <laughs> well, we're coming, we're coming up, uh, uh, we're leaving here Friday. I think it's going to be Saturday, but I'm, they're telling me Friday, so I'll stick with what I'm told, but I think realistically it'll be Saturday, which means we should be there probably Monday. Um, what's the weather like right now in in beautiful Dog Pass? Well, right now it's uh, it's uh, kind of cloudy and uh, and uh, damp, but uh, it, it feels like mountains. Never is it ugly weather. I mean, no matter what the weather is, it feels like mountains. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Now, we've been going on and on and had a lot of calls, and I won't take a lot of your time. Um, Bud has been, like I said, just very instrumental, been very helpful. Um, and obviously, let me let me tell those of you that may not know this, there are, let me think, let me do this real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven different people, different parties that in some form or another, we're involved in all that's going on there. So this has not been an easy task. We reached the point where we can do no more from Las Vegas. We have to be out there. And uh, we'll, we'll be able to make a lot more strides and accomplish a lot more when we're on site. Um, and so I just formally say thank you to Bud. The logistics are tough. I just told everybody, Bud, that we have put out our preliminary plans, but um, there's there's a lot we don't know. And the reason I bring that up to Bud is Bud is the guy who does know a lot. As many of you know, you've worked with Bud on the property. By the way, we just talked about an idea you and I did uh, some weeks ago about somehow trying to honor the people who volunteered out there with some sort of passes or maybe a, a free meal every once in a while to thank them. So we're not just taking people's labor and turning it into a commercial enterprise where you and I are going to work together to find a way that our company can say thank you through you from you for the work people have done. Is that right? That, that That's right, David. And, and, uh, we so appreciate that very much because we have become a family and we have bonded together through this. Yeah. The people that have volunteered, um, we're going to do whatever we can to say thank you. Of course, we're not directly. That's Bud's enterprise and his part of it. But we don't take it lightly. And, and there's a fine line where business is business and has to be. Uh, but that doesn't mean you can't be human and gracious. And I hope we demonstrate both responsibility to business and yet gracious and appreciative of people. And we will we will navigate that to the uh, best of our ability, okay? So, Bud, I will see you in a few days, my friend. Don't forget, David, there is a heart of dog patch. Oh, is she there? <laughs> no, but there is a heart of dog patch. She, the heart of dog patch... Uh, tell everybody about the heart of dog patch, and then I'll tell my story about. It. <laughs> well, she just uh, she spent uh, the the greatest part of her childhood here, and she came back the first time I opened the park up on the River Walk, and she's been 
here since then and uh, is, a, is basically the, 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 the family of Dogpatch formed around the heart of Dogpatch, of course, and she just was the de facto pick. Well, she you even uh, said it yourself. You named it without any help. She's the heart of Dog Patch. Well, Wendy is, uh, when I met Bud for the very first time in person, now we'd spent weeks on the phone together, but when I met him in person, um, Wendy was there, and she told me her story. And I said, well, you're the heart of Dog Patch. I mean, that's what it's all about. Listen, I, I will tell you, the history and the love people have for this wonderful place uh, was a was a wonderful thing to us. Uh, some companies see this kind of thing as a negative. They it's like, well, you know, we don't want to have to deal with all the past feelings and all. We don't care. Um, we're going to run the business. We we have to do what we have to do business wise. But Wendy was a perfect example. She literally spoke so kind to us and so ingratiated herself uh, and just spoke from her heart on both planes. I said, that's it. That's the person. She understands the past and she understands the future. And so I call Wendy the heart of dog patch and it stuck, didn't it? It stuck. That's what she is indeed. And, and you labeled it and that was, that was really perceptive of you, David. Well, it's, it's just, you know, it's, I don't know about that, but I appreciate that, but I do. And uh, I just loved the heart. I love that she understood what needed to be done to move forward. And yet she also stuck up for what, what mattered to her when she hadn't known that much about us and saying, these are the things that matter, but I understand you need to do thus and so. And I said, that's heart. And that's the heart of dog patch. So, uh, but I will, I will let you get back to Dia. You know, I love Dia. Give her a pet for me. Okay. I will, David. Thank you so much. Okay, that's Bud Pelser, um, who we greatly appreciate. Uh, I will just conclude tonight by saying we're honored. Uh, we're just normal folk. Um, nobody's, uh, well, Rick's pretty, Rick's famous, okay? <laughs> and we, we love what we do, and we've um, been honored at the reception to it all. And uh, it's an exciting time. For those of you that live in Marble Falls, We'd like to have a, a community get together. A couple key points. If you are Jasper City, if you are Jasper Schools, and if you're Harrison Schools, not Harrison City, but Harrison Schools, Jasper Schools, or Jasper City, the the what you all have been calling the hub, meaning the theater convention center, can be scheduled by you for whatever. I don't care if you want to have your proms there, we're never going to charge you ever. Okay, so we're going to do our part for the community, but we are a business. So I'm letting the schools know you schedule with us. It's open to you. You um, have something for the city in Jasper. The, that, that building, the convention building is open to you at no charge. Okay, now we have to work schedules and w as we progress, we'll have a very aggressive schedule. So we'd like to get, you know, a year on the calendar. Okay, in the beginning. Um, not a problem. You can just work with work with us, and we'll do that. So, if you're the school, any school in Harrison and any school in Jasper, if we can make the schedule work out, you don't have to pay for for the facilities. If you're a city official, and I'm specifically talking about the theater and convention center. By the way, let me say thank you to all of the property owners who have worked so well. I won't divulge their name because that's their business, um, but I will say the names of of uh, Randall and Deborah Phillips, who were very kind to us, um, basically gave us the, the the 411 on the whole hotel, and uh, we understand they had a great um, a great group of people who loved them. A lot of questions. It, we're not going to be themed a motorcycle resort, but we're we're just a a resort, so we're not we're not pushing anybody away. It's just um, it is what it is. It's it's new. It's a new day an exciting day, and so everybody's welcome, okay? And that's basically it. So I, a great thank you. I wish I had uh, an all-seeing eye and could tell you that everything is going to be perfect. I can't tell you that because there's a lot of questions we still don't know. Do we feel great and positive? We wouldn't be doing this, and we wouldn't be doing what you can't see here, which is loading up everything and coming out there if we didn't feel excessively positive. 
But um, don't look to us to be your answer. And I'm talking to people who are saying, I hope you don't disappoint people and I hope you don't this. Look, I can't be responsible for that. Richard can't be responsible for that. We're confronting what we're confronting in real time. And I feel good about it. Um, at this point, we're making a pretty serious commitment, okay? We're, we're uh, leaving a dry, barren desert to come to a gorgeous paradise. It's sacrifice, people. I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> All right? We appreciate you. I hope that helped in some respect uh, answer your questions. We're not going to release too much about the theme park plans until next year. Um, we do hope we can have the train up. By the way, I'll end on a very high note. Our train guy is a, is a company and is one of the best in the entire country. And he will be coming out in the next couple of weeks to Marble Falls, surveying the railroad there and the, uh, the incline tram. Um, I call it the skyline. Okay. That, that tram that goes down the hill, I'm going to call it the skyline and, um, it's going to give, you know, back and running. So he's going to try to get, we, we, we've asked him to absolutely have the train up and running, but he thinks from the pictures and videos that he's seen that we've took that we might even be able to get the skyline back up and running, which is the tram that goes up the hill. And, uh, he'll be out there in the next couple weeks. So we hope we can have the train. We think we can. It, right now, he's like not a problem at all. Of course, he hasn't been there to see the property. So uh, what I'm telling you is this this next couple years is going to be a very fun ride. Um, but also be realistic, people, about what we know, okay? I am, I'm, I'm kind of the type that likes to come in under budget and ahead of schedule. And that's the way I like to be. Um, but you don't make a commitment until you really have thoroughly vetted something. We've done all we can from 1,500 miles away and a few short days at the property. And we feel very confident. The, the good thing about everything there, all the hotel buildings and a lot of the structures, the people who built Dog Patch, and I mean the entire resort, as Bud would tell you, they overbuilt, meaning they, the superstructures and everything that they did was, is solid. But there's a lot of external wear and tear and problems from over the years. So how deep any of that external stuff reaches into what really matters, we don't think is significant, which is why we're making the schedule we feel comfortable with. But, you know, the next few weeks will tell us a lot. Thank you so much for your support, for being a part. It's going to be a fun time in the future. Um, we will uh, be out there quickly. We have homes in Branson, Missouri. And of course, we have a hotel in Dogpatch, USA, so we'll be at both properties a lot. And then there will be caretakers and security at the property very quickly. Just uh, as a public service announcement, there will be cameras. We're from the television side of things, um, so we're going to have cameras all over that property. I would ask everybody to um, just be respectful, and um, that's I'm talking about in terms of the property. Um, and that's pretty much it. Very exciting days. It's an honor to meet every one of you. I hope to shake many of your hands. Um, understand our schedule is going to be just crazy, but that doesn't mean we can't say hi and, and do an introduction and maybe just sit back and laugh a little bit on a Friday or Saturday night, have some music and just something informal before we all start running business. If you're a business owner, uh, we, we want to team with you, at least in spirit. I know many businesses, let, leave us alone, we're doing our thing. I get that, believe me, I do. And we won't intrude in any way. But if there's anything we can do as a company, uh, we've got great internet people, uh, great web designers, graphic people, television people, anything we can do to help anybody, that's what we're here to do, okay? To be a part of a community, not kings or wannabe kings sitting on a hill. We are known by our works, by the things that we do. And there's no way in one day I could possibly uh, earn from you what I may earn in six months, a year, or two years. Uh, all I ask you for with all of us is give us the time to walk with you, to build something incredible for the community, and let's do this thing, okay? And then uh, I'll be heading out Friday or Saturday, and I will promise you, 
If you want to think of us, just play Willie Nelson on the road again because I will be playing that thing in a loop from the time I leave Vegas till the time I pull up in Marble Falls. My name is David Hare. On behalf of all of us, we'll see you. Thanks.